Hello, and welcome to Picture This, a podcast from the photo archives of the Albuquerque Museum. My name is Jill Hartke, and I'm the digital archivist here at the museum. Today we are looking into the legend of a self-proclaimed healer named Francis Schlater in the 1890s. He wandered the western United States, at one point dropping in for a portrait session on Gold Avenue with Mrs. Albright. Buckle up for the story behind this photograph. Francis Schlater was born to German peasants in a French province in 1856. His parents were devout Roman Catholics, and Francis followed suit. As a teenager, he joined the shoemaking trade, working as a cobbler in Europe before immigrating to the United States in 1884. He lived in and around New York and became an American citizen in 1891. Then he headed west toward Denver, Colorado. He continued shoemaking for a couple of years before he began to hear a voice in his head demanding that Francis wander the country and heal people. He called that voice the Father. And in July of 1893, he left Denver on a mission to heal people, his path directed entirely by the voice of the Father. Despite being a shoemaker, he tended to walk barefoot, traveling thousands of miles across the western half of the country with very little money and a strong reliance on the kindness of strangers. That kindness was sometimes tough to find. He was mocked by his fellow itinerants, had his few belongings stolen in San Diego, and spent at least two stints in jail on vagrancy charges in Arkansas and Texas. By the summer of 1895, he had wandered to a small village south of Albuquerque, New Mexico, called Pajarito. He observed the healing traditions of the villagers and began healing people who visited. His reputation grew as more and more people became convinced that Francis Schlater was a divine healer. The Albuquerque Morning Democrat learned of the traveler and sent reporters to investigate. Residents of the small village recounted that Schlater had touched them and they were healed. He had restored sight to the blind, mobility to those with paralysis, and all manner of healing for chronic illnesses. The name El Senador, or the healer, became synonymous with Schlater, and soon everyone in Albuquerque was talking about the healer in their midst. Not only was Francis the talk of the town because of his purported healing abilities, but also because of the way he looked. He had styled himself in the image of Jesus Christ from popular European iconography of Christianity. He had long dark brown hair, a bushy beard and mustache, and when healing or in public, he maintained his gaze upward, very similar to the ways in which Jesus Christ is depicted in paintings, carvings, and sculptures in the Roman Catholic faith. On July 20th, 1895, Schlater came to Albuquerque, where he was met by a big crowd and began healing in Old Town. Father Mandelardi of Immaculate Conception Church was immediately opposed, saying that the Catholic Church does not approve of the actions of Schlater. A judge announced that Schlater should be locked up on a vagrancy charge, although he could find no policemen to brave the crowds to take Schlater into custody. Despite the doubts, People flocking to see the healer were adamant that the man was not a fraud. He refused payment for any of his treatments, and he, at first, refused to take full credit for his power, claiming that it came from the bidding of the father and that he was just a shoemaker. In 1895, anxiety around the dawning century had led many Christians to be convinced that the second coming of Christ was upon them. Francis Schlater's appearance, his reported abilities, his claims that his actions were directed by the Father, and his vocal supporters were seen as proof, and Schlater did little to dispute those claims. Although he did state that he was nothing but a shoemaker, he would, on several occasions, reply yes when asked if he believed himself to be Jesus Christ, and again say yes when asked whether people should take his appearance as the second coming of the Son of God. By August of 1895, word had gotten out, and a man from Denver named Edward L. Fox came to Albuquerque and convinced Francis to return to Denver, where the voice of the Father had originally appeared. Schlater took the train northward, waving goodbye to a crowd at the Albuquerque Depot. Mr. Fox had built a wooden platform behind his house in Denver where people could line up and Francis Schlater could heal them one by one. The healer's time in Denver is where his legend really took root. Tens of thousands of people flocked to Mr. Fox's home, with more sending letters to Mr. Fox's address for healing by mail. With those seeking treatment came the merchants and the hucksters who saw an opportunity within the hysteria to make a lot of money. 
Schlater's work was done for free, but his influence was so great that everyone from popcorn merchants to the Santa Fe Railroad wanted a piece of him. For weeks, people came by any means possible to wait in line for hours to get a chance to be healed by Schlater. Giant tents were set up for concession stands. Neighbors began renting chairs to the sick. It brought more money into Denver than they'd seen in a long while. And anybody who argued that Schlater was less than genuine was drowned out by those who saw him as a healer or as their golden goose. He was repeatedly approached by groups of businessmen hoping to lure the healer to their city, where they hoped a healing frenzy would boost their local economies. Still, there was trouble brewing in Denver. The legal system wanted Schlater to appear in court over the healing by mail process. Opportunists were selling things that he touched, and more people were claiming that he was a fraud. Denver's frenzy appears to have taken a toll on the healer, and on November 13, 1895, Francis Schlater left a note for Mr. Fox and vanished during the night. But a cash cow cannot just disappear without a trace. Spanish and English language newspapers across the country began a manhunt for the healer. After a month or so of searching, Schlater reappeared in New Mexico, wandering through Santa Fe, Peña Blanca, and Bernalillo, before finally reaching the Morley Ranch near Socorro where Mrs. Ada Morley Jarrett, an avid suffragette and social reformer, took Schlater in for the winter, protecting him from the elements, environmental and human, as much as she could. Although there were plenty of doubters, those who met Francis Schlater and got to know him most often stated that they believed he was sincere. That is, they believed that he believed that he was Jesus Christ. However, most of them also believed that he was likely mentally ill. Ada Morley Jarrett was an exception, and she became one of Schlater's most outspoken supporters, writing down conversations she had with him over the months that he lived with her. She published them in a book, one of the only accounts outside of newspapers that exist of the words and convictions of the healer. The healer's legend includes the detail that he often traveled with a gray or white horse that was given to him by an admirer in Denver, and he also carried a Bible and a copper rod. In the spring of 1896, Francis Schlater said goodbye to Ada and left Socorro, heading south, ultimately to Mexico, leading to more newspaper ponderings about where he was heading. About a year later, his remains were reportedly found by a man near Casas Grandes in the state of Chihuahua. The man saw a gray horse standing next to a skeleton. Near the skeleton was a Bible with Francis Schlater written on the inside, along with a Spanish-English dictionary and a large copper rod. While reporters scoured the United States for their renowned healer, it appeared he had died in Mexico. Or had he? For the next two decades, newspapers regularly claimed to have located and unmasked the real Francis Schlater. Some of the men reported as being the healer had never claimed to be Francis Schlater, but they looked so similar that they were often mistaken for him. Others were truly impostors, pretending to be Schlater to make a quick buck. But his possessions and the horse standing near the skeleton made most people feel that the healer was gone. Whether Francis Schlater was divinely gifted or not, his reputation took hold of the country. His actions and words, as reported in newspapers, persuaded thousands of people to travel hundreds of miles to stand in line to see him. Magazines filed Schlater under the subject of craze and depicted his image in cartoons alongside other fads that gripped the United States in the 1890s like bicycling or roller skating. Most of the photographs that remain of Francis Schlater, including those of crowds in Denver, were taken by William White a photographer out of Raton, New Mexico. The photos are housed in the Library of Congress. White befriended the healer and photographed his public healings, and Schlater claimed that the father would not allow other photographers to take his photograph. However, within the photo archives of the Albuquerque Museum are photographs taken by Mrs. Albright's art parlor and Cobb Studio. While many of White's photographs and Cobb Studio's photographs are candid, sometimes showing Schlater publicly healing, his portrait at Mrs. Albright's art parlor shows that he formally sat for a portrait at least once. In New Mexico, the truth of Francis Schlater's power was strongly disparaged and strongly defended. People could not agree on whether he was mentally ill or genuinely divine. Francis was vehemently attacked by the same press that clamored for stories and quotations from him. Finding a safe place may have proven a challenge, but when he needed to escape the intensity of Denver, he chose to return to New Mexico. Schlater may have seen New Mexico as a place that was as close to a supportive community as was possible for him. Whatever his feelings, he remains one of the enduring characters in New Mexico's past. Thank you for joining us for Picture This with the Albuquerque Museum. Please join us next time for the story behind another photograph in the museum's collection. Mm -hmm.